We are in the Environment and Natural Resources Institute Stable Isotope Lab at UAA, and we have four mass spectrometers here. Um, two of them are devoted solely to running water samples. These are cavity ring down spectrometers, and they analyze the isotopes of oxygen and hydrogen in water samples. Uh, a lot of what we run is rainwater samples that we get from all over the U.S part of the U.S. network of isotopes and precipitation. Um, so these take a little sip of water, a, a really, really small drop of water, and it gets vaporized, goes from liquid to gas, and then that gets pumped into a small cavity where a pulse of laser light is shot in, and um, it bounces around the cavity while the water sample is in there. The, the laser light is absorbed by the water molecules and on the way out of the cavity the light, the light is uh, analyzed again and we look at really distinct parts of the, the light spectrum in the laser light. So the light's absorbed by the water molecules differentially. Um, water molecules with heavy oxygen are absorbed differently than water molecules with light oxygen. So we can look at the light that passes through them and tell how much of heavy oxygen and how much of heavy hydrogen is in the water sample. You might have seen on those we had some bobblehead dolls on the auto samplers. We had Hula and Buddha over there and we have names for these two as well. We have Yoda which is our older wiser um, instrument that's been around for a long time and then this is Chewbacca. So these are isotope ratio mass spectrometers. They work a little bit differently instead of using laser light to get, an, um, get data for the isotopes that we're measuring. These use combustion, so they use heat to break up the sample that we're measuring. So um, here we have something called an elemental analyzer. We take the sample that I've prepared that we grind up and fold up into the little tin foil capsule. The sample goes into an auto sampler carousel. So there's 50 wells in here and each of them would hold a sample. And this moves one at a time, drops the sample in into a furnace that's at about 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit and it burns up the whole sample. So if it's hair, all of the hair is converted into gas. Um, it passes through a couple reaction columns and then onto a gas chromatograph, which separates different parts of the gas. So all of the nitrogen in the hair is isolated and it's, it's carried through the system as nitrogen gas. All of the carbon in the hair sample is isolated into its own little part of the gas stream and it's carried through as carbon dioxide after the reactions. So once we've done that, we've separated out the nitrogen and the carbon, then we can measure those independently. They are piped over to the mass spectrometer where the sample is introduced into the ion source which is down in here. It's basically a really really little filament like a light bulb but at a really really high voltage about um, 3,000 volts. So the sample once it's been converted to gas in the EA comes to the mass spec and hits that filament. It's ionized meaning we knock off some of the electrons in the outer shell of the gas molecule. And then it has a charge and it can be accelerated through a magnetic field. So all of the nitrogen gas gets shot down through um, the flight tube and it gets sent to the analyzer, which is a big magnet. And that's where we separate the light isotopes from the heavy isotopes. Um, if you can imagine a gas molecule that's a little bit heavier, that has some heavy, um, heavy nitrogen in it. So your normal nitrogen gas molecule has two nitrogens of mass 14, but some of them have one with a mass 15 and it's a little bit heavier. So as it's shot down this flight tube, the heavier one has a little bit more momentum and it takes a little bit longer. It, has, it goes around this curve a little bit more slowly. Um, so if you can imagine, it's kind of like a race car and a school bus coming into a, a, the curve of a racetrack. The school bus is going to go out a little bit further. It's going to have more momentum and it's going to go out wider, whereas the race car is going to be able to hug that curve a little bit tighter. So the heavy nitrogen molecules are separated from the light nitrogen molecules. 
and then they're directed towards two or three collector cups that measure the signal. So at the end of the whole process, we're able to tell how much heavy nitrogen or how much light nitrogen is in each sample. And we can do the same thing for carbon, heavy carbon versus light carbon, um, and a bunch of different elements that, um, that we measure. We also do sulfur and oxygen and hydrogen, but they all work on the same principles. So both of these mass spectrometers do the same thing. One's a little bit older, one's a little bit newer, but it's basically been the same kind of technology since the early 1900s. Um, the last instrument we have is a GCMS, which we can use for compound identification. So if you have a sample and you want to know what's in it, um, this doesn't tell us anything about the isotopes in the sample, but it can tell us um, what is present in a sample if you're looking for contaminants, um, if you're trying to figure out what kind of compounds are in a water sample, if you want to know if you're looking for the presence of, say, pesticides, or um, these are also used to for in forensics labs to determine if, um, if a certain sample has some kind of illicit narcotics or um, things of that nature. You can tell whether or not there's any number of compounds in a sample. So it's used for a, a whole lot of different purposes. Um, and we use it to, to separate out different amino acids in a sample to isolate amino acids, which will then go on eventually to be interfaced with the, the isotope ratio mass spec. There wasn't any real reason to have Jimmy other than we were looking through all of the bobblehead dolls that we could possibly find on Amazon, and we agreed that Jimi Hendrix was probably the coolest one that we found. It was either that or uh, Mike Ditka or the dude from Big Lebowski. And <laughs> so the dude's probably next, but Jimmy won in the last round of our, our bobblehead nominations. So um, we've got at least one more auto sampler to fill. So uh, maybe we can make an online poll to see who goes there next. <laughs>